Hey, I'm Derek Farrell. I'm the author of the Danny Bird Mysteries and I've been asked to share some thoughts and insights into lessons I've learned uh, whilst writing and publishing over the last few years. Enjoy. Okay, first up, there are no rules. This is really important, I think. I know lots of people who have been put off writing because they don't have the time or they don't have the background, they don't have the education, whatever. There are a million reasons why you can't write and why you shouldn't write, and they're all bullshit. If you want to write, write. If you don't have the time, decide how much time you can commit to do it and stick to that commitment. Um, there are definitely some things that will help. If you read, you'll be a better writer. If you write, I know it sounds ridiculous, but if you write, you'll be a better writer. The more you write, the better you'll get. Um, a friend of mine has a line that is oft repeated, which is, you can edit 500 words of crap, but you can't edit nothing if you haven't bothered writing it. You're gonna have some people say, if you don't write a thousand words a day, you're not a writer. That's nonsense. You need to write as much as you can when you can. You're going to have some people who say that unless you quit your day job and commit 100% to writing, you're not a writer. That's also garbage. You'll starve. Um, so yeah, all in all, I would say there are lots and lots of rule books out there that will tell you what you should be doing, but only you can really decide what your commitment will be. There are lots of people who will swan around parties and conventions and things saying that they're a writer. Well, unless you write or have written or are writing, you're not a writer. Thinking about, you're thinking about writing one day is procrastination. I mean, I, there is no easy way to do this, but there is also no wrong way. There is only your way and the way that works for you. I wrote a number of what I thought were very commercial crime novels. That's what I write. I write crime. Um, and they didn't work. They didn't get picked up. No one was really enthusiastic about them. And then I went on a course and I the, the, the course was a, was a birthday present. The whole point was that it would just be, come along, hang out with some people, write some stuff, see what happens. And I ended up writing a character um, who was a, a gay Anglo-Irishman. His mother's Irish, his father's English. Um, and he's living in London and uh, actually at the beginning of the book he's living in Windsor in this fabulous house with a boyfriend who he finds that is cheating on him and my character decides screw this I'm not hanging around to be cheated on walks out and ends up with nothing and it was an exercise it was purely and simply make a character and describe how they feel I'm not writing a book I'm not doing anything I'm just writing a character I put it away because the stuff I was writing was much more historical based, it was much more thriller based, except people kept coming up to me for weeks after I read the piece and saying, what happens with that character? What, what, what happens next? How are you going to make his life better? And I was like, well, I'm not. I'm not going to make his life better. My job was to write a piece and I wrote a piece and it was fun, but it wasn't being done for a reason. Jump forward a bit, people are still saying, yeah, but he was such a nice guy, I'd love to go for a pint with him, I liked him. And I thought, well, I liked him too, but let me just see. So I, I saw, I played around with the character, I figured out not how to make his life better, but how to make his life worse, because that's the point of drama. You can't make people's lives better till you've made them worse. You have to put them through all of the challenges. If you've given them a challenge at the beginning, 
that challenge cannot stay the same challenge through the whole book because then the audience thinks, well, I'm tired of this. And you, you know, you, you want to build the pressure, build the challenge and get to a point where the reader feels this is insurmountable. And depending on what you're writing, if you're writing tragedy, maybe it is insurmountable. Maybe that's the whole point of the book. If you're writing comedy or crime or commercial fiction, the point of the book is to build this pressure, lay on these challenges, and allow the character and the reader, to an extent, to achieve some form of either victory or acceptance. So I wrote the book. And the book was called Death of a Diva. So, how did I write my first book? By accident. I wasn't sitting down thinking, I'm going to write something that's a whodunit that brings the classic Golden Age styles bang up to date. I did it for an exercise. I then played around with it because enough people told me that they really liked what I had done. And I ended up with a book. No rules. The rules said I should have been sitting down intending to write this. I should have been working on this. It happened by accident. How did I work with that? That's where some real effort came in because then I had to edit and polish and rework it and shape it and tidy it and make it actually feel like a book. But all of that came from a starting point that said, the rules say you should have been working on this book. I wasn't, I just let it happen. How did I get published? Again, I had pretty much, I made a couple of attempts. I sent it to a few people. It came back with most frequently with the comment that selling a book with a gay male protagonist in something which is primarily a very commercial, very mainstream mystery form was not necessarily going to be easy. And so most of the people I sent it to came back and said, if you change the protagonist and make him the straight woman and effectively demote your protagonist to being the gay sidekick, we can talk. But I didn't want to do that. And then enough people saw the book um, and enough people liked it, even if they didn't think it was necessarily going to be an easy sell. Um, again, I ended up talking to a publisher who liked the sound of it and said, send it to me, and then came back and said, really love this, want to have this. It was not one of those spend 20 years sending it out and getting rejections. I got a handful of rejections and I decided that people like me with books like this simply aren't viable. So I was about to park it and go back to writing something with a straight protagonist in a historical setting when this happened. I got published. No rules. No, if I do the following things, because even if I had taken that, that advice from other people and changed the protagonists around, there was still no guarantee that they'd buy the book or that the book would sell. You can't predict what's going to happen. All you can do is do the best that you can with any piece of work and then let it go, move on. One thing I think is really important to say here is about defining your success. Some people write books and assume a lot of people write books and assume that they'll sell for millions of dollars and Hollywood will make movies and you'll never need to work again and you'll probably never need to write again because you'll have so much money in the bank. That's not going to happen. So what is going to happen? What is your measure of success? It's really important that you have this in mind at some point in the process. I'm not saying before you begin, think about this. But at some point in the process, start thinking about this because any creative endeavor is a really strange environment to stray into. You're going to constantly have your own doubts assailing you. Is this good enough? Am I good enough? Am I, 
who am I fooling? Am I fooling myself? What's the point of all this? <clears throat> You're also going to have the voices of external forces assailing you. And these voices may be loved ones telling you genuinely, I don't want you to be disappointed. I don't want you to be upset. I think you should abandon this crazy dream. And they may mean it for the right reasons because they do care about you, but they will add to the chorus of voices in your head, making it difficult for you to know whether you're actually getting where you want to be or not. You're also going to have the voices of other parties, people who really don't care about you and don't know you and have no real vested interest, but will decide either directly or indirectly to inform you that what you're writing is unoriginal, uncommercial, unnecessary, um, is a million things that are wrong and jaded and tired that, you know, Proust has done it before and James Joyce has done it before or Agatha Christie did it better. Whatever you will hear is going to throw you the other good thing you're going to experience is the success of your friends, other people you've written with, who suddenly go from here to here. And that's brilliant. It's so nice when nice people succeed. But there's also a little bit of you that thinks, why not me? And that can throw you as well. This is Any creative endeavor is essentially built on self-doubt. And so that all of these things can throw you a curve. They can leave you doubting yourself so much that you risk essentially packing it in, walking away from it, because you have not succeeded. You're a failure at this. But very often when I see this, it's because people haven't defined realistically what their success levels are before they get to that stage. Let me give you an example. When I wrote my first book, Dead of a Diva, available on Amazon and directly from the publishers, FahrenheitPress.com, I'm contractually obliged. Uh, when I wrote that book, uh, I wasn't writing it for an audience. I was writing it for myself. When I polished and edited it, I began to think of an audience. And the audience I thought of immediately were my friends and my family, because as I was working back through it and editing it and shaping it, I thought, this is making me laugh. I like these characters. I like this story. It's a full book. I want my friends and my family to love this. So I made it, I shaped it with the intention that my friends and my family would enjoy it. That was my first measure of success. I just want the people I love to love this book. And they did. After that, it became a case of, you know what? I would like five people who've never met me to like this book. Just five complete strangers to buy it and enjoy it. Of course, when I signed my publishing deal, the publisher's take on that was, we need to aim higher than five people, Derek. I've got costs to cover it. I've been incredibly blessed that thousands of people have bought the books and have loved the books and reach out to me and contact me to tell me how much they enjoy reading them and what a pleasure they bring to their lives. I have new objectives, new goals. I want each book to be better than the last. I want each book to gather a bigger audience than the last. I have plans for the future. And it's important that you know what your objective here is. If you want to write a novel or a piece of work which will be reviewed in newspapers and broadsheets and, and glowingly reviewed by the sort of people who review books that don't necessarily sell very well, then you know that and that will help you to work what you're working on and to understand how to approach it. If your intention is to write a book which will please a large number of people, but probably never be reviewed in those broadsheets because it's viewed as genre trash, that's important that you understand what your objective is as well. It also means when you have sold a book and it has been appreciated by a, an audience bigger than you ever dared to imagine, you can say that you're successful. You can feel that you've achieved your first objective. And it helps 
to quieten those voices. Okay. Last thing in this part, celebrate your successes. Life is short, so am I. Life is often very painful and very sad and very dull. If you succeed, if you've finished the first draft, celebrate it in whatever way works for you. Do something to mark the moment. If you get a good review, a good remark, celebrate these things. Don't hide, oh God, I'm gonna go biblical here, but don't hide your light under a bushel. The world is full of people who are afraid of being laughed at or looked down on, and therefore they never share their joys and their talents with anyone. If you've got a talent, if that talent has succeeded in delivering what you set as an objective, celebrate it in whatever way feels right for you. And after celebrating it, pack away the celebrations, get back to work. There's an old line that's been prevalent in writing circles and, and in writing teaching for probably longer than I've been alive. And that line is to write what you know, which is an interesting concept, but it really needs to be unpacked. Because if what you know is boring, and if what you think you know is boring, then what you write will be boring. When I talk about the things that I'm passionate about, whether I'm passionately for them or passionately against them, then my writing comes alive. All my books are set, at least partly, and in some cases mostly, in a pub. They're about people who work in a pub. I've never worked in a pub. I've been in a pub, I've been in many pubs. I've been in many pubs first thing in the morning and many pubs last thing at night. I have had friends who worked in pubs, so I have been backstage in pubs, but I've never worked in a pub. And yet I'm writing books about people working in a pub and not one critic has ever said, this doesn't feel true, this is not real, this guy doesn't know what he's writing about because the point of my books is not about working in a pub the point is about the feelings the hatred the anger the love the jealousy the squabbles the point of my books is about humanity and that's the second lesson when they say write what you know don't think it means you have to write about something as prosaic as the facts you know. I mean, the facts will definitely save you research. If you know about working in a pub, then you'll have to do a lot less research than I've had to do. But if you're writing about something you don't know, but your feelings are authentic, you've got a good chunk of the job done. Fine. I can't say this often enough. I, I can say it a million ways, but it's going to come out the same thing. Find your tribe. We grow up and we know we love writing and we write and we read and we are part of a tribe by the nature of existing. We are social animals. Your family, your friends, they're a tribe. Find your writing tribe. That's what I wanted to say. Find your writing tribe. I am blessed to have a family who support me writing. They don't find it weird that I sit upstairs every night and tap away on the computer. This is hugely important. Sitting at a desk while you exist mostly in your head and creating characters, writing something is awesome you need to get outside of that. You need to walk into a room full of other people who are writers, whatever way, a writer's group, a convention, whatever you can find that introduces you to other people who are doing the same thing is awesome. It's terrifying 
if you're me, because every moment you think they're going to think you're a fool, they're going to think you're a fraud, they're going to hate what you do, but they didn't. They don't. I'm part of a community of writers and creatives, and it's amazing. So find your tribe. One of my heroes once said that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. It's a good line, um, and, but that's not the only reason why I love it, because like all really good lines, it's also an incredibly true line. Earlier, I said there are no rules, and that was absolutely true. You need to decide what works for you, and you need to decide what your objective is, and you need to then decide what your measure of success is, and you need to go for it. But you cannot start to break the rules. You cannot start to make your way if you don't already know what the structure is, what the history is, what has historically worked and what hasn't worked. My books are in part inspired by my love of the golden age of crime writing. Agatha Christie, Dashiell Hammett, Raymond Chandler. In fact, Dashiell Hammett and Raymond Chandler, are, they gave the names to characters in my own books. Um, and that's fine. I still hand over fist from those people. I'm not going to invent the wheel if they've already invented it for me. And I'm not going to throw their wheel in the trash because it's of no value to me because I'm making modern contemporary fiction. I'm going to make my modern contemporary fiction. I'm going to write what I want to write with that bedrock underneath me of reading other people. And it's the same for you. It doesn't matter what you're writing. If you're writing sci-fi, if you're writing literature, if you write romance, if you write memoir, write, absolutely, write what you need to write, but read what you want to write. Read the genre, whatever you're involved with, whatever you're passionate about, whatever you want to make. Read people who've come before you Three, two, one. So I hope this has been helpful for you. It's a bit of a scattered approach to things. I just want to throw ideas out there and maybe get you thinking um, and maybe get you challenging and arguing. If you disagree with me, if you think I'm completely wrong, that's fine. Give me a shout. My details will be at the end. Um, but just to reiterate then, very briefly what I've talked about so far, there is no one way to be a writer. There is no one way to be published figure out the way that works for you and commit to your to your approach define your success know what you want to get from the project and and stick with that don't allow the voices to tell you that that's a dumb objective or whatever define your success stick with it celebrate your successes life is going to throw you a million failures the world will be more than happy to remind you of those constantly. Make sure you're celebrating your successes and reinforcing that positive approach that what you're doing has value. Find your tribe. Find friends who write. Find friends who are creative. Find people. I'm not saying get rid of all your old friends and get rid of all your family, but surround yourself with positive people who understand where you are, what you're doing, and who can buoy you up and G you along and hold you accountable and make sure that you're doing the work you need to do. Write about what makes you passionate. The things you love, the things you hate. That's going to connect with people far more instantly, far more definitively than waffling for 100,000 words about something that you're knowledgeable about, but on which you really don't care. Passion will always trump that. Know your history. 
not saying you have to copy what's gone before, but understanding what's gone before in the style that you want to write in, in the genre that you want to write in, is a hugely important way to build a basis that you can either jump from, i.e. take that and move forward, or jump away from. Without understanding the history, without reading the stuff that you want to write, you're working in a void, and that is never going to result in the best work. And that's about it, really. Enjoy. I hope you have a great summer. I hope you're writing. I hope you keep writing. And I hope you have all the success in the world.